Good afternoon. I want to say welcome to all my viewers from across the globe today. Now, there's something I consider curious and also perplexing about the UK immigration uh, system. Now, we live in an era when asylum seekers who enter the UK from, from France through the channel, that is the, the body of waters between France and the UK, now, these uh, unfortunate migrants who managed to cross the treacherous channel waters, they are sent back to Rwanda for processing. If you know what I mean, processing, you know what I mean. So it does not matter that the UK Supreme Court has ruled that such a measure is illegal. And then what did the government do? The government simply brushed aside the ruling of the highest court of the land and they proceeded to enact a new legislation that empowers the government to proceed with what some critics have described as Rwanda deportations. So it was my curiosity that led me to a story about a Jamaican man, an immigrant, who has waited for 38 years to have his residency permit approved and must now wait for additional 10 years before he could even dream of becoming a UK citizen. So we're talking about a total of 48 years. If you want to discover how this came about, I want you to keep watching, don't just go away. And I read from the story published by The Guardian on the 11th of June, 2024. It is titled, Jamaican man in UK for 38 years must wait another 10 years to apply for citizenship. The story says a Jamaican man in his 60s who arrived in the UK at the age of 23 has been granted leave to remain after four decades of struggling to secure his immigration status. Now, the leave to remain, for my viewers who are not familiar with that term, is the UK's equivalent of what the Americans call green card. It is also the UK equivalent of what is commonly referred to as a residency permit in continental Europe. The Guardian story continues but he will not be able to apply for British citizenship for another decade. He says Dennis Henry, 61, came to the UK in January 1986 to join members of his family. He was an apprentice tailor and dreamed of a career as an engineer in the music industry. He arrived on a six-month visa and was unsuccessful in attempts to regularize his status because like some members of the Windrush generation, he was unable to evidence his years of residency in the UK. So the question is, what does the Windrush generation refer to? What does it represent? It refers to people of Caribbean descent who came to the UK between 1948 and 1973. The BBC online published a story on the 14th of May 2024 titled What is Windrush and What is the Windrush Generation? So this story gives us an insight into what the Windrush is about. Then there is a particular scandal that is associated with the Windrush Generation. And what is this a scandal about? According to this BBC online report says the 1971 Immigration Act gave Commonwealth citizens living in the UK indefinite leave to remain. That's the permanent right to live and work in the UK. This included the Windrush generation, but also people from other former British colonies in South Asia and Africa. However, in April 2018, it emerged, according to the story, that the UK Home Office has kept no records of those granted permission to stay and had not issued the paperwork they needed 
to confirm their status. These people became cut off, not because of a fault of their own, but because of the fault of a particular institution. The story says it had also destroyed landing cards belonging to Windrush migrants in 2010. So the consequence was that those affected were unable to prove that they were in the country legally and were prevented from accessing health care, accessing work and housing. So some were caught up in this bureaucratic web. Some even were unjustly deported for no fault of theirs. Now imagine being deported for no fault of yours. Imagine also being in a situation where you are unable to access housing, you are unable to work, and you are unable to access health care for decades. How do you survive? What happens if you fall sick? So let's go back to the Guardian story. It says he was stuck, referring to this Jamaica man, he was stuck in the catch-22 of not being able to take formal employment or to access public services because of his immigration status, and so did not have sufficient formal documentation to prove his length of stay in the UK. The problem was compounded by a house fire in 1998 in which the documents he did have were destroyed by water damage when the fire was extinguished. And now, according to this publication, he's a father to three British children, one of whom has died. He has been in a relationship with his British partner for two decades. And in 2018, he was diagnosed with prostate cancer. So the fact that he is a father of three British children, that is not sufficient. The fact that he is a partner of a British lady is just also not sufficient. So the Guardian story concludes, the situation echoes other cases such as that of Nelson Shadi, 74, who came to the UK in 1977 from Ghana. I'm not going to bore my viewers going into the story of this particular gentleman from Ghana because that's a different story entirely. So, as we bring our show to a close today, it is obvious to uh, a neutral observer that it is easier for the camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for an immigrant to satisfy the immigration rules of the UK. And even God does not play such an onerous duty, such an onerous responsibility on those who want to enter his paradise. Now, I want to thank you for watching. And if you have enjoyed our content today, consider to subscribe to this channel. Also, continue, consider to share our work, the work that we do to create awareness. Consider also to like and to uh, support uh, this channel in diverse other ways. One of the ways is to uh, buy what we call a super thanks. It's a one-off kind of support. Another way is to be a member of this channel. Whichever way you choose, to support us, I want to say that I'm grateful. Thank you so much for watching and bye.